Hoi hoi, hello and welcome to the Meet Maastricht podcast. I'm Katrina and together with our resident local Lucy, we will be exploring some of the amazing stories that make Maastricht so special. So sit back, relax and join us as we learn about our favourite Dutch city. So this is our Ask a Local segment. Today we have a very special guest. Uh, we have Flora with us, who is the third member of the Meet Maastricht team. So one of the reasons we have Flora is because one of our questions came from Flora's parents when they visited. So do you want to ask their question, Flora? Of course, and yes, I have to do it for them because they do not speak English, unfortunately. So even if, they, <laughs> even if we would invite them, they could not ask it. Uh, so the first time they helped us move here in Maastricht, they were visiting on their own while we were, you know, getting uh, settled. And they were they came back with one question, which was, why are there so many churches here in Maastricht? You can really see them from every point of view. So why? <laughs> <laughs> Lucy, do you have an answer for us? Yes, I'm. I'm gonna wing this one. Um, but I, I think you will uh, you will realize this is this is pretty much the the, the common sense answer uh, when looking at uh, our first podcast where where we talked about the Soul Brothers Chapel and the and the kind of uh, service they were providing to the city I think somewhere in 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 discussing all that talking about it uh, I probably mentioned somewhere that that just about everything that we consider now social services which should be provided by governments or private parties used to be provided by the church. Uh, so everything, every aspect of healthcare, physical uh, illnesses, uh, uh, mental disease, uh, everything having to do with, uh, uh, you know, dealing with poverty, dealing with orphans, dealing with the aged, all of that was taken up by different religious orders in, in the course of the centuries. This started pretty much at the end of the Middle Ages, an older tradition of uh, monastics being uh, useful, if that is not too uh, pedestrian a term, was of course the, the, the great abbeys in the countryside who would uh, build dams and dikes to regulate water uh, and prevent uh, uh, floods. Um, working the land, producing uh, grain, making beer, um, you know, all sorts of uh, stuff. And some of those uh, settlements were, were pretty much small cities, very extensive domains. And of course they were here in these regions as well. And then what the, what the abbeys would generally do is also build safe houses, uh, the fugia, where, the, you know, refuge. Uh, places to take refuge within walled cities like Maastricht. So Maastricht se has several of these refuge houses which belong to the great abbeys out in the countryside. Okay, all the helping and assisting and providing for the city populations uh, came about uh, at the end of the Middle Ages w with orders like the Franciscans, the, the, the male variety, the female variety, and what they also took upon themselves, primarily orders like the Dominicans and later on the Jesuits, was educating people. So, you know, everything we now consider uh, 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 training and education and learning was provided by uh, religious orders as well. Uh, and then in the 19th century, when uh, finally uh, this part of what is now the Netherlands was allowed a little more religious freedom under the Protestant overlords, and you know, these parts being Catholic of course, there were uh, quite a few uh, new orders coming in, like for instance the Brothers of the Bay. So that, that's how. Oh, and a last one, also uh, um, uh, literal refugee places. There are, uh, there are small churches here that were built by refugee communities. So there's a there's a ch there's a little chapel here uh, for the for the which is called the Walloon Church. So this is this was built by by refugees from French speaking areas. So if you add all that up in a small town 
like my street, yes, that adds up to lots of towers and spires and chapels. <laughs> yes. Quite a few. Yeah. Yes. Um, <laughs> also, just um, just to mention that when you look at the main dates or the, uh, the main events happening in the history of Maastricht, uh, I could also give a small explanation to my parents in the end uh, after staying here for a little while, because when you look at the history, you can that uh, in the in the Middle Ages. In the early Middle Ages, uh, Servat came to Maastricht to install his, uh, to install himself, and it became one of the main Catholic places of uh, of the region. So I thought it was also an explanation, maybe, for it to be so important still nowadays. Yes, that is that is a part I skipped. Thank you, Flora. It, it, of course, the uh, yes, the local, the local parishes and the local uh, pilgrims places. Yeah, of course, Maastricht uh, pretty much remained in existence and and developed to a large extent uh, thanks to uh, pilgrims. You know, that, that was definitely a contributing factor. Pilgrims coming to Servas's grave. Which became this extremely large and powerful church, and uh, so, so yeah, we, so we have that the the uh, the dual uh, Savas community being the Savas Basilica and Saint John's, which of course was the parish church of Savas, and the other one, the the older one of our sweet ladies, which had which was the canons church, like Savas was a canons church, and which also had a parish church next to it, the Saint Nicholas's, which is um, destroyed. And then there was then there was also the uh, the parish of um, Saint Matthew uh, along the Bow Street and Saint Martin in Wick. So uh, yes, the, the 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 local parishes and pilgrim churches. Of course, that's the, the those are the those are the big towers. I uh, I think from my perspective as an Australian, I think um, also just the size and the the age and the beauty of the churches makes them stand out a lot more than if you're walking down the street in Australia. There might be a church that looks. Not too different from mm -hmm. the houses around yeah. it, <laughs> whereas here um, they are. Oh, a lot of them are stunning feats of architecture as well, so they uh, stand out. I hope that answers your parents' question, Flora. <laughs> I think I think uh, all of it combined is a perfect answer, indeed. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us today, and don't forget to follow us on social media. You can find us on Facebook by searching Meet Maastricht and on Instagram at at meet underscore Maastricht. If you would like to learn more about us, you can also visit our website at meetmaastricht.eu where you can buy tickets and subscribe to our monthly newsletter so you're always up to date. Thanks again and tune in next time to learn more about our beautiful city. Tot ziens.